team in the South Division. Thank you so much for joining us. This is Migs Gomez at your service, alongside Javi Palanya and Andrea Indicio. Javi, I have a simple question for you. Who's your favorite? Well, I think uh, Batangas is going to come out with guns a-blazing in this game. We all know that Jensen has been playing well in their past few games, but I think Batangas has an axe to grind in this one. I am very surprised with that answer, Mr. Javi Palanya. And that is certainly very interesting, so I hope you get to invite your friends and family as well to witness our action live on MPTV Channel 98 on Signal TV, and also on our live streams on Facebook and on YouTube. And for us to fully understand just how important this game is, Javi will be breaking down our team standings in the South Division. Well, as we've already mentioned in our first game, Bacor City already has a lock on the number one spot. But today, we'll natin which team between Batanga City and Jensan will be getting the number two spot in the Southern Division. Zamboanga is most likely to lock up that fourth spot if Quezon loses their remaining games. But if Quezon is able to tie Zamboanga at 20 and 8, then Quezon will be the one getting home court advantage at the number four spot. Meanwhile, Imus and Muntinlupa palalaman pa natin in the remaining game kung sino sa kanila ang aangat dito sa 6 and 7 spot Iloilo is already a lock at the number 8 so a lot of playoff implications pa rin para sa last remaining games na mga kupuna natin at dito sa ating Southern Division and so we hope that you can catch the action live as well tomorrow in Imos and on Saturday down south in Quezon Province. Now let's talk about the previous game of the Batanga City Embassy Chill. A heartbreaker that was against Makati. Yeah, they became the latest team to be beat by the upset kings of the MPBL, the Makati OK Bet Kings. Makati led for most of that game, extending their lead to 14 at one point of the match. However, Batangas was able to get on a furious rally in the end game in the fourth quarter. However, just falling short, losing the game 82 to 80 in that one. As we look at the stats here, Alas pareho lang ang ating field goal percentage. They were able to outscore them from the outside, but Makati was the steadier team from the stripe, getting 21 out of 34 free throws as opposed to only 12 makes from the line para sa dito sa Batangas City Embassy Chill. It was such a valiant effort coming from Batangas who played without two of their star players, na sina Jexter Apinan and also their point guard na si Rudy Lingane. Jong Baloria almost made it to the top, but unfortunately he wasn't able to shoot that ball in the last second as MJ delivered him and missed that last shot to possibly win it for Batangas versus Makati. Now let's talk about the previous game of the Jensen Warriors. It happened in this venue on the anniversary of Enzo Hoson's first ever MPBL triple-double and he capped it off with another triple-double. Yeah, Jensen's been on a roll here in the past three games. They've won their three, three straight ball games. They raced to a 26 to 17 lead after the first quarter, which they extended to 56 to 37 at the half. They led by as much as 34 points in this game. Aside from Enzo Hoson, everybody just really pitched in here for the Jensen Warriors, really moving that ball around, making the right play, scoring the three ball, and scoring in transition as well. As you look at the numbers in this game, 42.3%, 42.1%, but 44 out of 104. You see the discrep discrepancy in terms of makes and attempts between Jensen and Sarangani in this game. You just imagine the number of possessions that Jensen was able to generate because of the stops that they made and the turnovers they forced. Out rebounding Sarangani also 62 to 45. And as I mentioned, the fast break point story, 35 to 15, a plus 20 advantage for the Warriors in that game against the Marlins. Well, I asked three guys before this game, to what do they credit their uh, chemistry to no, in this season? And they actually answered, Ping Masaglang. He's been the joker, uh, the glue guy for Jensen. Not only is he playing well on the court, but off the court as well. He obviously has taken on some leadership duties in order to get the chemistry going for the Jensen Warriors. Now we have an assistant coach interview by Andrea Indicio, and we will feature assistant coaches Dino Ponce and Vis Valencia. That is right, Migs. Kasama ko nga ngayon si Assistant Coach Vis Valencia ng Jensen and of course, Assistant Coach Dino Ponce and Rile ng Batangas. Thank you so much po for joining me here. Unahin ko na muna ng interview si Coach Vis. Coach Vis, nabanggit sa akin kanina ni Coach Rich that he's not putting any pressure to his boys right now. But how important still is this ball game for you guys? Well, syempre, this game will, you know, give a, kung sino man nanalo will give us a better standing going to the playoffs and will give us a better momentum going to the playoffs. So, Ang gusto lang ni Coach Rich, we just, you know, focus on the game plan, we just focus on, you know, 
doing our uh, the, the instructions mga Pliny Fair na Alright, thank you so much. Good luck to you and your team. Dumako naman tayo sa aking kanan. Coach Dino, your team is known as a defensive team. But aside from defense, ano pa po ba sa tingin nyo yung advantage ninyo against Jensen? Well, ang advantage siguro namin is uh, we've been together for the longest time, about 4 or 5 years. So I think that's one of our advantage over uh, other teams in the MPBL. Alright, thank you so much po and good luck to you and your team as well. Mga kaliga, wag na po natin itong patagalin. Ken Pangilinan, take it away. At the Nueva Ecija Coliseum in Palayan City for the 2023 OK Bet. Manny Pacquiao's MPBL Season 5 presented by Extreme. It's the battle for the number two spot in the South Division playoffs as Batanga City take on the Jensen Warriors. And now let's meet the starting lineups beginning with the Batanga City Embassy Chill. Starting at point guard, number one, CJ Eason. Shooting guard, number nine, John Ray Villanueva. At center, number 26, John Ambuluto. At power forward, number 27, King Importante. And at small forward, number 22, Levy Hernandez. The head coach of Matanga City is Cholo Villanueva, assisted by J.R. Aquino, Warren Capitan, John Arenas, and Nino Enrile. Assistant team manager, Gilbert Alea. Team manager, Gina Labanza. General manager is Mr. Jerry T. Team owner, Lucio Tan, and LGU partner, Congressman Marvi Marino. And now, let's be the starting five for the Jensen Warriors. Starting at point guard, number nine, Mark Cruz. Shooting guard, number 15, Enzo Hosson. At center, number 67, Rene Pacquiao. Power forward, number 18, Hafer Mondragon. And at small forward, number 11, John Wilson. The head coach of the Jensen Warriors is Rich Alvarez, assisted by Vis Valencia. Jesus Ramon Pino, Peter De Liguero, Apple Coronado, and Rolly Minor. Assistant team manager, Dennis Perez. Team manager is Berman Flores. Our referees for this ball game, Edmar Aves, John Luis Aripe, and Romina Presenting Nora. the starters for Batangas and Jensen, we have CJ Isit, John Rey Villanueva, John Abolunto, Eddie Hernandez, Nick Importante, the Ant-Man Mark Cruz, Mr. Triple Double, Enzo Hoson, Rene Pacquiao, Hafer Mondragon, and John Wilson. And again, folks, this is the battle for the number two spot in the South Division. There you see our great coaching battle as well between Coach Cholo Villanueva and Coach Rich Alvarez. Great shot by our cameramen and our director, our producers out there as John Dre Villanueva scores inside. I want to tell you guys about my conversation with Coach Cholo Villanueva before this game. I asked him, Coach, where do you stand with your team? Obviously, here in the fifth season of the MPBL, having gone through so many changes all season long. And he said, well, I think we are overachieving because of the loss of our star player in Cedric Ablaza. That's a mythical five caliber of a player, by the way, folks. They still are battling for that number two seed in the South. Last year, they were in this position as CJ Isit scores inside and he gives credit to a lot of their newcomers. John Abuluto and MJ De La Virgen have also increased their level of play. Now, transitioning as veterans and go-to players for Batangas come to playoffs. But that's just a testament to how well Coach Tolo Villanueva has really shaped his team and developed their chemistry over the years. Despite losing Cedric Ablaza, they've been able to still be an elite squad here in the league. And that's because everybody pitches in their own contributions, whether it be defense or offense. That's the making of a great squad. Now, what you like about them is that even though they know or they know that they're already overachieving, you can see it in their body language that the minimum for them is the championship as Debbie Hernandez misses. Remember, this is a team that experienced a lot of heartbreak last year, losing in three games to Zamboanga in the South Finals. They only lost by a point, by the way, folks. They were, what, one or two seconds away from the finals as Rene Pacquiao scores on a one-hander. A couple of surprise starters for Jensen in this game. Haver Mondragon and that guy, Rene Pacquiao, beginning this ball game para kay Coach Rich Alvarez. Those two usually come off the bench. CJ Isit 
on to Jandre Villanueva. Now the ball is with the Draymond Green of Batangas, King Importante. Unfortunately, they turned the ball over, but now they get it back. Levy on his drive. Nice fake. Two free throws. You got to love this matchup at the wing position in this game. Levy Hernandez against John Wilson, two of the best scorers that we have here in the MPBL. And two former foes as well in the collegiate level. This is Arellano versus JRU. I'm trying to think about the history as well of these two players here in our league in itself. Yes, they fought a lot before. Those duels between Pampanga and San Juan, two of the best teams that we had in the early seasons of the MPBL. Of course, Levy had different teammates back then. He used to be teammates with Mark Cruz, Michael Wico, and the rest of the crew. Kabila naman, ito si John Wilson. He's been teammates for the longest time with Larry Rodriguez, but back in the day, he had the likes of John Clarito and Mike Ayanaya to help him out. Here's CJ Isit. Also, the former teammate of John Wilson scoring on fast break. Well, that's the reason why he was brought in here for Batangas for his championship experience and his leadership on the floor. The way that he runs the show para sa Batangas City, he has stepped in to the starting point guard role for majority of this year para kay Coach Cholo Villanueva. And he's done a beautiful job at it. It's more than the offense. He delivers a lot on the defensive side of the floor. That's the reason why... CJ Isit has played a significant role for Batanga City this year. Here's the full court pressure coming in from the white shirts. Haffer Mondragon gives it up to Hoson. Enzo gave it back to Haffer. Wilson beats. And Pacquiao will miss. You think he thought about dunking that ball? Yeah, I think he wasn't quite decided on what he was going to do with that ball. Whether he was going to dunk it or just lay it in for those easy two points. Good thing they retain possession here with a baseline inbound. This is, after all, a rare start for Rene as John Wilson makes a three-pointer. Wilson, in the previous outing of Jensen, made three of those three-point bombs, scoring 11 in total. One thing that teams really have to be wary about against Jensen is even if you're able to negate the scoring production of John Wilson. You now have other guys that you have to be careful about as well. A lot of capable scorers on this Jensen team, Enzo Hoson, Mark Cruz, and then you have guys coming off the bench. Even Nico Elorde and Ping Masaglang can put on the points for you because of their defense. Mark Cruz misfires him downtown. Great battle for the rebound. Ball out of bounds in favor of Batangas. Uh, the reason why I did pick Batangas as the favorite for this game, of course, that's only a slight advantage if I would tab them with it, is because they really had a heartbreaker against Makati. And, you know, playing without their key players, I believe they were so convinced that had they had a complete lineup, they would have steamrolled over the Kings. Well, they only lost by two points. Donache actually played good defense against Robbie Celis. Robbie was just too good in that last possession. Mark Cruz works with Enzo Hoson. Try to beat this full court man to man. Great defense by CJ Eason. Jensen is down by three. Hoson escapes and he scores. Excellent read of the defense. CJ Eason overly aggressive in trying to pressure that basketball. And Enzo attacking the pressure, finding himself a wide open lane. Great read also to finish with the inside hand. 8-7 now, CJ Isit to John Dre Villanueva. Ambo passes up top. John Dre back to Ambo. Ambo Luto could not score. Rebound Pacquiao. By the way, Rene Pacquiao and John Ambo Luto used to be teammates in Kaloocan. Now Villanueva got the steal. Good counter defense by John Wilson. And now that's a charge in John Ray. Now you just got to love the effort being shown by your top player. When John Wilson puts that much effort on the defensive end, mahihiya ka na lang if you were the other guys. If you don't put in the same kind of energy that your franchise player is displaying when he's on the floor. 
Pressure continues for Batangas, and yes, they do get the steal. Numbers for the white shirts. Levy goes to Importante. That's not a good pass from King. Back with Jensen. Back and forth, we have gone. Enzo Hoson stepped out of bounds. Sharp eyes by our officials. He already knew that it was out before he even caught that basketball. Botched opportunity on the previous play for Batanga City. Good thing they got a stop here. An unforced one at that. Well, I did mention that King Importante is the dream on dream of Batangas. By the way, that came from Coach Chola Villanueva himself. But do you, just like dream on dream, do you want to see more scoring from him? Is there an issue of overpassing from Mr. Importante? Well, I wouldn't say that, but definitely King has to be able to recognize situations where he's being given the open lane. But so far... It hasn't really created much of an impact, his lack of scoring ability or scoring production. It's because the other guys have really been chipping in when they when they're set up, when they've been set when they've been get with good plays, especially with the passing of King Importante. You know, he's a guy that Coach Solo Villanueva trusts a lot. That's why he's on the floor most of the time. He makes good plays and he plays great defense as well. Those two come hand in hand in playing in a team that's coached by Coach Solo Villanueva. You gotta be able to be so intense and aggressive defensively, but you have to channel that intensity and aggressiveness in a smart and intelligent manner. There is Ceres Sato enjoying the action here inside the Nueva Ecija Coliseum. Of course, he is a member of the Creamline Food Smashers of the PVL and formerly of the NU Lady Bulldogs in the UAAP as King Importante scores inside. Uh, just as we were talking about the lack of scoring from King Importante, he shows us with a move inside. 10 to 9, Jervy Cruz. Great defense by King. There you see, much like Draymond Green, he started a break for Batangas. There's a sorry miss for Donachea as Hoson attacks and scores basket and one. That's the second time he's finished with that kind of layup in this quarter. But this time it was on the break of the pass by Mark Cruz. He saw Ambuluto and he knew that he was going to get past John on that play. Protecting the basketball with his body by finishing with the inside hand again. The bonus was just no good for Enzo. But Hoson is well on pace to surpassing his previous game output of 14 here in Nueva Ecija. As Hernandez misses, Enzo with the board. 11 to 10. Now Jensen is up by one. John Wilson. Catch and shoot. In and out. Rebound Levy. Under four minutes in the opening frame. This is the battle for the number two seed in the south. Another sorry miss for Batangas. Already three point blank misses for Batanga City in the past few possessions. Kirby Cruz to the right, Enzo Hoson. Short. Rebound importante. King surveying, surveying, passing. Nice fake by Ambo. Two free throws. Well, that's something that. We haven't seen in the past Galengay John Nambuluto, but this season he has really expanded his repertoire of moves, owing, of course, to the added responsibility that he's been given by Coach Sole Villanueva, and he has responded well to the call of his head coach. Rudy Lingane has now returned. Jexter Apinan is also set to return, replacing this guy, John Nambuluto, who basically had no choice. But to step up for Batangas City with the absences of Cedric Ablaza and the injuries to Jexter Apinan. Mark Cruz, by the way, is also not present today because he is serving a one-game suspension off of that disqualifying foul in Valenzuela. Now, Apinan returns, and if you would look at his right elbow, it's heavily bandaged because it still really hurts. And that came from Jexter himself. Uh, Daganancano in that Quezon game that they had in Zamboanga. 11 all, turnover. Here's Jexter. A 
to Jong Valoria. Jong leans in. Short. Rebound to Lorde. Now here's Enzo Hossa. The pass to Masagla. Up top, Jervy Cruz. Swing to the left. Nico Elorde. Too strong. Rebound, Jervy. And there's the putback. Well, Jong Valoria found himself down low in the position to grab the rebound kaya lang it was Jervy Cruz who was in front of him that's quite a tall order literally and figuratively to try and snatch that rebound away from Jervy oh nice pass John Baloria on the jack step behind just a lot of chemistry between those two you know the great thing about this Batangas team is hindi masyadong nagbabago yung energy and yung pag set up and yung roles ng kanilang five on the floor when the units change it's because they're almost the same type of players. Dexter Apinan comes in for King Importante. Rudy Lingane comes in for CJ Isid. And then you have John Valoria coming in for Levy Hernandez. So, nasa cement mo pa rin yung mga type of players na gusto mong magproduce on the floor. Well, we can attribute that to the system and the program of Coach Cholo Villanueva through the years, though. And he did tell me that, yes, it does take a lot of time for you to be fully integrated into his system. That's why even a guy like Rafi Okobre is still adjusting at his best pace. And so, I asked him, I tried to fish it out of Coach Cholo. Coach, siyempre, hindi naman tayo strangers to recruitment here in the MPBL. If you would choose a player that you can recruit for next year, can you give me a name? And he said he's looking for a three-level scorer. That's a term used in NBA 2K. As John Valoria scores in the fast break. His answer, Javi, is Mix Oxon. Oh, wow. That, that is definitely quite the mention coming from Coach Cholo Villanueva. Mix Oxon, a very promising two-guard who plays for the CSB Blazers. And he is, he is looking to have a great season this year trying to lead CSB back to the championship and hopefully get the chip he has quite proven himself as just that a three level scorer in the collegiate ranks but siyempre alam naman natin how different it is to perform here in the pros owing to the added physicality and just by playing with a lot of grown men who have been here for years that just really changes the game so dun talaga nasusubukan ng galing ng mga bagong pasok their ability to adjust to the style of play here in the league. And also adjusting to the system of Coach Cholo Binyanueva, which again, might take years for you to do, as Octobre misses. Rebound Jervy, five seconds to go before the end of one. One more chance here for Nico Elorde. Three-pointer is too strong. That will do it for our first ten minutes. Uh, quite an eventful first quarter for these two squads. But one thing... I've noticed has been missing getting in sa parehong kubunan. Both of these teams like to shoot the outside shot, but here in this first quarter, they are a combined 1 out of 14 from 3-point country. This, this is the aspect of the game where they were all able to dominate in their past matches. And this has been a staple of their game this year. Both teams really like to get their production from the outside, but so far, wala pa yan in this game. You are still watching the Maharlika Pilipinas Basketball League live on MPTV. 
Coach Rich Alvarez is very much aware that this Batangas team is a very good defensive team. Kaya naman para sa kanya, magandang challenge daw ito before they go to the playoffs. Gusto daw kasi niyang makita kung paano magre-respond ang Warriors once they face such kind of a defensive team. But instead of pressuring them to get the win, ang approach ni Coach Rich is more of welcoming and embracing the competition. Now that they are facing Batangas, kamusta daw kaya ang magiging consistency nila sa depensa, the number of their turnovers and their transition defense. Matatapatan kaya ng Warriors? Makes it heavy. Well, Jensen already has seven turnovers in this game. Fast break scoring is in favor of Batanga City as we take a look at our first quarter field goal shooting. Six out of 21. Both teams shooting under 30%. Five out of 18 para dito sa Jensen Warriors. And for Jensen to be down by just four points right now despite having seven turnovers, that's still something. So if Jensen is able to take care of that basketball, they could really get the lead here and maybe establish even a double-digit advantage. Now again, folks, as Mike Alvarez scores from the elbow, this is the battle for the number two seed in the South Division, which also means this is most likely a preview of your second-round matchup in the South. Of course, if they prevail as upper and higher seeded teams. Ping Masagla gives it up to his best friend on the court, Nico Elorde misses. Great effort by Apreco, just not enough as the ball went out of bounds. Yeah, those two really, per really are a very scary duo defensively. They're very pesky, they're very physical, and they love to put you in situations where you could be so uncomfortable in handling the basketball that they take it away from you. 17 to 15 now. Jong Boloria working with Jexter Apinan. Jong drives baseline. Got the ball back. It's a kick ball first. Batangas will retain possession. The star coaches, Rich Alvarez, Cholo Villanueva. To of high regard here in the MPBL turnover. Mike Alvarez on the chase. He gives it up to Nico Elorde. And Nico was fouled by Rudy Ningane. Actually, a poor decision right there by Alvarez to give it up to Elorde because Ningane was right there. Kaya lang Rudy was just a step too late in playing those passing lanes. He had other options. Talking about Mike Alvarez, who's getting early playing time, by the way, in this game. Alvarez, by the way, already has the best player of the game honored to his name in this season. And if I'm not mistaken, it happened in this venue. As Big Masaglang scores for Jensen. And that's talaga going to happen in the venue. Oh. <laughs> the game is tied. Valoria could not break that deadlock. And here's Nico Elorde, one of the smartest guys in the whole of the MPDL. Jeremy Cruz fires and misses. Great effort inside. Ball recovered by Donachea. Here's Rudy. Ingane operating with Jextra Pinan. Lefty hook shot. No good. Oh, Rudy had a tough fall. Mike Alvarez on the breakaway. Might not have been the perfect pass, but still a good catch by Michael Alvarez and the presence of mind to be able to put it up just before he went under the basket. Jensen now has the lead, 19 to 17. A four-point swing so far in the second quarter. Jong Baloria. Ooh, thought he was fouled. No call there. Kabila tayo, Nico Elorde. He will fire. That's short. Apinan surveys. Dexter waiting for Jong. There's Mr. Baloria on the two-man game. Nice play. Sorry, miss. That was with the right hand. That's his offhand. Of course, we know Jexter Penan is a lefty. But he has developed that over the years. So just really a botched opportunity there para sa Batanga City. And again, that right elbow is the injured elbow for Jexter Penan as Masaglang scored for Jensen. Ping now has four in this matchup. Those jumpers from the short corners, almost automatic para kay Ping Masaglang. You give him space, he's definitely gonna knock him down. 
Again, he's been a glue guy for Jensen, much like this guy, Dexter Apinan for Batangas. Well, he's done a splendid job of holding the fort para sa Batangas this year. We know that they've been reeling from the absence of Cedric Ablaza, but Dexter has been able to step in and be that type of guy para sa kanila this season. And by the way, Jexter is Cedric Ablaza's best friend. Yes. So that's extra damage for Jex as October got the board and the put back to go. Yeah, that's a lot for them to go through, but you know, they know that wala naman sila magagawa. They have to be able to just control what they can control. And that's how they play on the floor and how they try to lead the squad. That guy, Rafi Octobre, despite him being a new addition to this team, he has been able to integrate himself very well. If you remember in that game against Pampanga, he was actually the guy who delivered the telling blows against the Giant Lanterns in the fourth quarter to be able to give Pampanga their first ever defeat of the season. I did talk to Coach Cholo about Rafi before this game and he said, imagine if we had both Rafi Octobre and Cedric Ablaza on the floor. The stretching of those big men would be very useful each and every time. And I would foresee that he could have maybe used Jexter at the three spot with those two guys on the floor. That could have been such a tough five to work against. And you couple that with MJ and maybe Levy Hernandez on the floor, CJ, the guards of Batanga City. Just a what if para sa Embassy Chill. Levy Hernandez at the corner, no good. That was too strong. Ball out of bounds in favor of Jensen. Halfer Mondragon and Rene Pacquiao have checked in. Two starters for the Jensen Warriors in this matchup. I'd like to give a shout out to that guy, Halfer Mondragon, who is the oldest player of the Jensen Warriors at 42 years old. I was actually surprised when I found out about that from John Wilson. He doesn't look like he's 42. Not and at all. With the way he plays as a hard worker, yeah. props to him. His motor's still there, the energy. He brings a lot of the intangibles still. Just like how he played in college before with Letran, and that was already many years back. Hindi nagbago yung kanyang laro. How about Enzo Hoson though? His aggressiveness offensively in this game has been very well felt. He now has seven points. You know, earlier in the season, Coach Rich Alvarez was trying to shape Enzo into a very into a more efficient player because dahil nga nandun pa si Kitimenez, medyo naging masikip yung rotation of the guards para kay Coach Rich Alvarez. And so he wasn't able to give a lot of playing time to Enzo. And so he hoped that Enzo would use the playing time that he's given to be able to contribute still. But now that he has more time on the floor, he's been able to uh, transition beautifully and be one of the go-to guys for Jensen. Well, he has attributed the number of reps that they've had in their practices onto his chemistry with Mark Cruz and John Wilson. You can see it again on that play. Nice pass by Enzo, who looked away at the last second. And it's Mark Cruz who challenged the defense of Jexter Apinan. Giving a three-point lead to the Jets and Warriors, 25-22. Four minutes and 23 before halftime. Now we have our season averages for Jensen and Batangas. Oh, these are two of the best scoring teams in the league this season. Number six and number three in terms of points scored. Both teams scoring above the 80s. But this is the thing that Batangas has really been known for, especially in the time of Coach Solo Villanueva. They have always been one of the best defensive teams. They're number three in points allowed this season. And that is why they've had so much success the problem is they just haven't been able 
to convert that into a deeper playoff run in the national championship. By the way, I'd, I'd like to add just some more statistics here. As De La Virgen misfires from downtown. Batangas is number one in the league in bench scoring at 48.7. And Jensen is number one in the league in three-point shooting at 35% efficiency. Just not displayed by John Wilson on that previous attempt. Yeah, they've, they've taken away that throne from the Sarangani Marlins as the best three-point shooting team in the league. Nuno Alitong Batangas City, you mentioned the number one bench scoring team in the league but against Makati they only had 28 as against the 33 of the Kings well Baloria had to start in that matchup with the absences of Rudy Linganay and Jexter Apinan now King Importante has returned for Batangas Apinan will sit down here's King taking his time fade away shot no good great effort by Baluto ball recovered by Jetsa Mark Cruz on behalf of Mondragon. 12 on the shot clock. John Wilson trying to post up. Turn around. Too easy. Uh, they had the scramble, and on that scramble, MJ Delivergen was forced to tag John Wilson because there was nobody in front of him. It was Dona Cheya picking up the point guard, Mark Cruz, which was supposed to be the man of MJ. There's a foul. On that pressure sequence, it's on Enzo Hoson. Only his first foul. Hoson, by the way, is the leading scorer of Jensen so far with eight points. 27-22, sideline inbound for Donachea. There's King Importante. Pinapalabas, Levi Hernandez, and that's a charge on John Apoluto. Very obvious that he was moving when he set that screen. Talking about Apoluto. John Wilson, very underrated defender. He is able to sell a lot of those calls. We've seen that throughout his career. Paso Dito, see Rafi Octobre. Nice backdoor by Enzo Hoson. Almost had a nice idea of tapping it on to Napper Mondragon, but it was read well by Batangas as well. Pacquiao turns around and misses. That was way off. And that's excellent defense on the block by John Ambuluto, one and one with Pacquiao backing down. They didn't even have to have a help defender come on over to prevent a shot. Palitay Sapatangas. MJ delivered him. Another foul. It's on Haffer. This seems to be the challenge of Jensen, no? They do have a deep guard rotation, but they did lose Christian Pajarito. And Larry Rodriguez might not see action today with the way this game is going. Yeah, Pajarito was a big loss for them, especially with the way Christian was playing. You saw the way he was able to transform himself into a significant contributor para si Jensen. And that was very remarkable considering he was playing alongside with Larry Rodriguez and Jervy Cruz. And here you see the previous mic coming from Sniper de Mexico, Levy Hernandez, able to hang in the air despite the contact, finishing for those two points against two Jensen defenders. That's Levy Hernandez for you. And we have been talking about this in the previous outings of Levy. He's been more aggressive driving with that basketball as opposed to just catching and shooting. Well, unang una dahil those three-point shots haven't really been falling for him at the rate that he would want to. And pangalawa, I think he's looking at finishing inside the rim as a means for him to establish his rhythm para makakuha siya ng mas maraming kumpiyansa para tumira sa atas. Remember, Coach Cholo is looking for a three-level scorer as well. So, if not through recruitment, why not get it from improving his players? As Wilson picks. Oh, what a nice pass on to Nicole Sorella. Aside from being an underrated defender, John Wilson is also a very underrated passer. Many people don't notice how he's able to see the floor and pass it to his teammates. 
everybody knows that he's an elite scorer, but a lot of people overlook his passing ability. Jensen has outscored Batangas by seven in this quarter so far. Tobre in trouble. Now he has recovered. Nine on the shot clock. Rafi. There's the pass. MJ delivered him. Pass inside. Good anticipation by Enzo Hoson. Now there's a foul given up by MJ delivered him. Oh, uh, Jensen got all of the options covered except for one. Levy Hernandez was actually the wide open option on the left side of the floor. But De La Viren decided to put it inside. Dangerous pass, but this was the great feed by John Wilson to Mikol Sorella off of the fake. We go back Jensen's way as CJ Isit is now back guarding Enzo Hoson. 29-24, Hoson will drive. He shot the ball, that's short. Now CJ's on the run, 2 on 1, and Hernandez will finish. That's picture perfect fast break, just like you run it in practice. 2 on 1, TJ Isit recognizing the runner on the right side, that was Levy Hernandez. Textbook bounce pass to his scorer for the two points. It's practically mandatory for you to be able to finish properly in these types of situations. Great job by both CJ Eason and Levy Hernandez. They have trimmed the lead down to 3, For a premium experience in an exceptional stay, we present to you Buraki de la Ia, the official hotel and resort of the MPBL. Do visit their Facebook page. Might as well inquire because that is such a great venue, folks, for you to enjoy probably a weekend with your friends and family. But right now, we are four hours up north of Metro Manila in Palayan City, Nueva Ecija. The Rice Vanguards will take on the Pasay Voyagers later on. But right now, it is the battle for the number two seed in the South Division between Batangas and Jensen. Mix, I'd like to give a shout out to uh, Boss Monching Talisay, the team owner of the Imus SV squad, who is watching intently right now because isa dito sa mga kupunan natin na naglalaban ang makakalaban nila sa first round ng ating playoffs. Yes. So a bit of scouting happening right now. And Boss Monching and the rest of the Imus, good luck tomorrow in your home court defense versus a very tough Makati Kings squad. Levy Hernandez fires. That's short. Great effort by Isit. Behind the back, risky pass. Bodies on the floor. Wow. That's a foul on the Preku. Well, this should explain just how important this game is. Uh, CJ Isit had to get fancy on the pass could have delivered it in a, such a simple manner it was picked off by Jensen good thing on you know, the dive for the loose ball Isit was the first one to the rock in a pregnant good thing no one was injured there CJ Isit will now shoot free throws first one for the former Sun One Knight is good Offensive production in the past few possessions has been a problem for Batanga City. Jensen has been upping their intensity on the defensive end, but it's also the lack of someone asserting their might para dito sa Batanga City. They really have been trying to get into their offense in through Batanga's fashion. Here's Debbie Hernandez. Three pointer. Short. Rebound, Mark Cruz. Shooting in this game is not as good. 34% for Jensen, 28% for Batangas. But then again, we have talked about the defense of these two teams all season long. Something that we can expect as well in the playoffs. Enzo Hoson, step back, too strong on the three-pointer, and that will do it for our first 20 minutes here in Nueva Ecija. A defensive battle, a chess match between the two coaches. 
Batangas and Jensen, Coach Solo Villanueva and Coach Rich Alvarez, two guys who are very great at making adjustments and two guys who really pay a lot of attention to detail. The score at halftime is 29 to 27. Back here at the Nueva Ecija Coliseum for your OK Bet Maharlika Pilipinas Basketball League. My name is Andrea Indisha covering the sidelines for this ball game. And right now, we will be having our halftime interview together with Sir Merman Flores, the team manager of the Jensen Warriors. Thank you so much, Paul, for joining me here at the half. Sir Merman, you guys are down to your last game's elimination round. But looking ahead, how are your preparations for the playoffs? Uh, we just got to practice hard, stay focused stay with the game plan and hopefully we get big wins. Kaya naman talagang lalong inaabangan itong Jensen. Ngayon naman Sir Merman, do you have any greetings or shoutouts? Yes, we'd like to thank our sponsors, um, Iconic Motor Sales, um, AJF, and Reden Sportswear, and Jinky Skin. And we would like to thank lahat ng mga nanonood ngayon dyan sa Jensen ngayon, ang aming Mayora, Lorelie Pacquiao, uh, Congressman Bobby Pacquiao and Governor Roel Pacquiao. And shout out nga pala sa Taplex, uh, Street Signs, uh, Tara, and sa lahat ng mga nanonood ngayon dyan dito sa Nueva Ecija. Good evening. Thank you so much, Sir Merman. At syempre, hindi po natin nakakalimutan ang ating mga kaliga online because it's time for our MPBL shout out. From Chill City, good luck Batangas Embassy. Chill, rooting for the big win. Go Idols! Nakakatuwa naman dahil Chill City ang nagpadala pero ang team nyo ngayon sa laban na ito, no chill. Next, we have Juni Boy Tangunan. Good luck sa inyong team. Jensen Warriors talagang hindi magpapahuli ang fans ng Jensen. Next, we have Jessame Escares. Go Batangas! Another fan of the MC Chill. And lastly, we have Rinel Maurilio Maravilla. Good luck, Jensen. Another fan of the Jensen Warriors. At may naririnig pa nga ako dito na itong matchup daw na ito ay laban ng Lomi versus Tuna pa nga. Kaya naman mga kaliga, tuloy-tuloy lamang po ang comments at shoutouts, lalo na po ngayon na malapit na ang playoffs. Kailangan po ng ating teams ang inyong suporta. Magbabalik po ang MPBL. Kapag may labay nagkakaisa Luson di 
Visayas, Mindanao, basketball na. Ang bawat labay pinaghahandaan, kaya yung mayanig ang pakbakan. Todo suporta ang lahat sa kanya-kanyang kubunan. May labay nagkakaisa Luzon, Visayas, Mindanao, basketball na Ang bawat labay pinaghahandaan Kaya yung mayanig ang pakbakan Todo suporta ang lahat sa kanya-kanyang kubunan
Basketball League. It is halftime here in Nueva Ecija for the battle for the number two seed in the South Division between Batangas and Jensen. It is a low-scoring affair, 29-27. Not the best of shooting from both of our teams. How about the three-point shooting? A combined one out of 30 in this game so far. Yeah, that's coming from two teams who waxed hot from the outside in their previous games and two teams who have really use the three-point shot as a big part of their offensive arsenal throughout the year. At makikita mo dyan, 20 to 18 ang ating inside points. That just continues to highlight how much of these teams have been struggling to get points outside of the paint because karamihan ng mga na-score nila was inside the shaded area. Batangas just doing a little bit slightly better in terms of getting the ball on the glass. But I believe which team will be able to hit their three-point shots in the second half. We'll have a good chance of winning this ball game. We have already emphasized how both of these squads are very good defensively. Obviously, nakikita natin yan. They've been giving different looks to their players inside of this game, and that's the reason why both teams have really struggled because both teams really put a heavy premium on the defensive side of the floor. Nevertheless, Levy Hernandez continues to lead the way for Batangas City, even though with zero three-point makes so far, he has six points. So, October, Isit and Apinan combined for 14, just behind Mr. Hernandez, Sniper de Mexico himself. And then on the other end of the floor for the Jensen Warriors, it's Enzo Hoson following his triple-double here in Nueva Ecija. He has eight points and three steals to his name, with John Wilson scoring five Masaglang and Mike Alvarez combining for eight points as well behind those top two scorers. Now, if we can go back to three-point shooting, let's just remind everybody that Jensen is supposedly number one in the league in that department, averaging 35% efficiency when shooting from downtown all season long. I did ask John Wilson what the problem is, and he said 50-50, our shots aren't falling. And also, the defense of Batangas, you cannot underestimate it. On the other end, I asked Debbie Hernandez, what's happening? 
And he said, it's actually the ring in Nueva Ecija that's different. He told me that if there's a top three in terms of hardest rings to shoot at here in the MPBL, number one will definitely be Pataan. And then two and three would be Nueva Ecija in Zamboanga. Wow. And that really, you know, affects the player's performances in terms of shooting the basketball. Which is why maybe a lot of these guys have been trying to get their points inside the paint. King Importante has been aggressive in looking for his shot in this match. Something out of the usual para kay King who usually tries to set up his other teammates with shots inside the floor. By the way, during that conversation that I had with Levy Hernandez, King Importante chimed in and he also attributed to that top three of Levy. Power pass here. Importante, good catch. Sorry, miss. And that's not a good pass from Ambuluto. Out of bounds. A surprise starter in the second half is O'Neill Arim. It's usually Importante who delivers those kinds of outlet passes. That time he was on the receiving end, just unable to finish those two points inside. Well, that's a foul on CJ Isak. He was too aggressive defending Nico Elorde. Something that Nico is familiar with as well as he does it on his own. Now, one of the interesting things about Jensen is the guard switch up in the second half. This is a usual thing for them. Starting Nico Elorde and Big Masagla to begin the third quarter. Yeah, because when Coach Rich Alvarez does this, it just means that he wants more defensive pressure, especially in the backcourt. He wants to be able to get turnovers that will lead to easy baskets because this is not as potent as an offensive lineup as you have when John Wilson, Enzo Hoson, and Mark Cruz share the floor. So he's hoping for guys like Nico Lorde to try and lead the charge defensively to get baskets in transition off of turnovers and steals. But that time of the inbound play, Nico Lorde taking it for himself, finishing with a dipsy do. Levy Hernandez misses again. John Wilson got hit. So this is a mismatch for Jensen. Wilson is still on the floor. It took to have been Levy Hernandez who collided with John Wilson. Yeah, it seems he was hit on the face. Great sportsmanship though between those two veterans here in the MPBL. They mentioned their battles since the NCAA. See what happened here off the miss. Yeah, watch those two at the top of your screens. Not quite sure if it was something that was intentional galing dito kay Levy Hernandez. But as you mentioned, great show of sportsmanship by picking him up after he was down on the floor. We go back, Jensen's way. Good steal by Oni Larim. Counter steal there. Almost but not quite for Ping Masaglan. And then King Importante got fouled. I wonder if there is particular instruction coming from Coach Solo Villanueva to have King Importante really look for his shot in this game. He has really been trying to attack the ring and he has also been a beneficiary of a lot of drop passes from his teammates. Passes which he is usually making to his teammates. Well, if, if we can go back to that comparison of King Importante to Draymond Green, we all know how hard it is to defend Golden State when Draymond gets his groove. Same thing might happen here for Batanga City, especially with the shooters still not connecting here for the white shirts. But I think this is also because Dexter Apinan is not 100% in this game, and so he expects King Importante to carry the brunt of production from that position on the floor para sa Batanga City. Jexter has been well bothered by that right elbow injury. Now the ball is with Nico Elorde. Down low to Larry Rodriguez. This is his first appearance in this matchup. John Alberta fires and misses. Ball tap. No conversion. Recovery for Jensen. Elorde on the short stab. Wala pa rin. Scrambled with the loose ball. Wilson. He is fouled. 
Persistent space right there. Jensen unable to get a shot down and through the net. They just continued to battle for those loose balls on the offensive glass. And in the end, John Wilson able to draw the foul. First free throw is good for Wilson. He is number two in the league in free throw shooting percentage at 82%. Although technically speaking, because Paeng Are is now out as he's playing for his college, we can also consider that John Wilson is now back on top in that category. Dexter Apinan has also returned. 33-31. Under eight minutes in the third. Levy Hernandez to Jexter. They go to O'Neill Arim. Back to Apinan, seven on the shot clock. Jexter drives and kicks. Levy Hernandez to CJ Eason. Back to Levy, he will fire. And finally, that's the first three-pointer in this game for Batangas. And you saw the reaction of Coach Ola Villanueva right after that shot. That was something that they really sorely missed in the first half that production coming from three-point country and Levy Hernandez is definitely one of their top guns in terms of shooting the basketball from long range again folks Batangas was 0 out of 16 from downtown in the first half now they're 1 out of 18 as Masaglang turns the ball over a little bit out of control there as he tried to get the ball across excellent defensive pressure off of the miss coming from Batangas City this was the extra pass, not really rattled with the shot clock winding down. Levy Hernandez straight and through for that three. We go back, Matangas' way. They're up by one. Three minutes gone by in the third. Levy is open. That's a two-pointer, and he drains it. We've talked about how Levy could be such a streaky shooter in terms of makes and misses. You don't want to get him on a roll here if you're Jensen that's already two straight buckets five straight points Calique Hernandez to try to counter no good for Larry Rodriguez great effort by Masaglang and John Wilson makes it all worth it Levy Hernandez on the other side well this is a guy you also don't want to get hot it is a John Wilson we all know his capabilities as a scorer in this league former FEBL MVP that's the second three of John Wilson in this matchup. Elorde, good pass. That's his best friend on the court, Big Masaglang. You know good things are going to happen when Nico Elorde is leading the break and you have Big Masaglang running on the wings very wide enough to get a good lane to the basket. One of the best finishers for Jensen on the break. There's just too much pressure on that defensive sequence from Elorde on Isid. Great pass. Great finish. Masaglang tried to do something on his face as well. Not sure if that was intentional as John Wilson gives us his three-pointer. There's a warning on Levy as you take a look at our fast break scoring, 10 to 8. Dexter Apinan, King Importante. Levy Hernandez, almost a steal there. Recovery for Levy. There's the post up. Hernandez powering through. He could not score. Rebound, Dari. A great job by Masaglang to keep him off the shaded area. The other end we go. Rodriguez to Wilson. They have been teammates for the longest time here in this league. Wilson is fouled. Basket and one. That is diff what's difficult when you go up against an elite scorer like John Wilson. You pressure too much, and he will attack. And this time, a little bit of a cage made by Wilson to get a rim on his back. And the contact coming from behind because of the push, that's going to be an end one opportunity for John Wilson. John Wilson is number five in the whole of the MPBL in scoring, averaging 17.4 per game. Just missed his gimme, 40 to 36. Five minutes and 30 here in the third. This is the battle for the number two seed in the South, which means home court advantage come the second round. Dexter Apinan, driving and kicking. CJ Isit, his turn to attack. Isit could not score. A clever move, maneuvering to the basket, just could not finish with the right. Kabila tayo, Nicole Sorella, up top to Larry. 
Now they go to Nico. Elorde taking his time. Seven on the shot clock. Nico at the middle. They go to Rodriguez for seconds. There's the bounce in the back door. Another foul on CJ Isid. Uh, CJ was caught man watching right there. Did not have the ball in his sights as he was trying to deny the option on Nico Elorde, which allowed Nico to be able to get ahead of him on that cut to the basket. Baseline inbound now for Jensen. Mark Cruz. Now replace Mr. Elorde. And Enzo Hoson as well to replace someone later on. Ooh, there's a call against Jensen. John Wilson is very upset about it. Coach Rich Alvarez is confused. It looks like there won't be any challenge here. Well, Wilson was arguing that Cruz was already established inside the baseline, but our referees thought otherwise. That's why it's going to be a turnover for the Warriors. 40 to 36, CJ Isit, pick and roll, up and on, though will go to the line. This is where the two man game of Batangas is dangerous when CJ Isit sets up the pick and roll action near the elbow and not behind the three point line. It gives Apinan a shorter lane going to the basket. So when he rolls, malapit talaga siya sa ring. And all he has to do is receive the pass, gather, and go up strong. There's a warning on Larry Rodriguez for resentment to a call as Apinan proceeds to the strike. 7 11, free throw shooting. Ng Batangas so far make that 7 out of 12 now. Again, this has been the problem for Jexter in all of his years playing basketball. You can only wonder how much that elbow is bothering him. Well, for it to be heavily, heavily bandaged like that, definitely there is some pain to it. And I could imagine that if this game were not very important para sa kanila, I would have thought that he would just sit out and let that elbow recover fully. But because this is a battle for the number two spot in the Southern Division, he chose to play even if he was not 100%. Same goes for Rudy Lingane in this matchup, who's coming off of a shoulder injury, or he still has that shoulder injury. As Enzo Hoson proceeds to the stripe, that's his first miss from the line. Check that. That's his second miss from the stripe. Eight points. Ooh, not good for Enzo. 40 to 37. O'Neill Arim. No basket. Hawson forward pass. John Wilson will score. Now Batangas has gone back to that slump again that they experienced similarly at the end of the second quarter. Not much offensive production. So I expect after this timeout, maybe John Valoria would be inserted to share the floor with Levy Hernandez to have more firepower on the offensive side para sa Batanga City Embassy Chill because out of those misses and turnovers, Jensen has been able to capitalize. You are still watching the Maharlika Pilipinas Basketball League live on MPTV.
Coach Cholo Villanueva shared to me their mistakes when they went up against the Makati OK Bet Kings. At kahit nakilala nga sila bilang isang excellent defensive team, according to Coach Cholo, they lacked on communication defensively and they had so much turnovers that game. And since nga daw itong Jensen is quite similar with Makati, they had to address those mistakes right away. Nabanggit din ni Coach Cholo that Jensen has many smart players, so the goal tonight is first, outwork them, and lastly, outsmart them. Back to you guys. I actually want to echo on the communication problem for Batangas in that previous outing. Jexa Apinan addressed that to me, that with his absence and with Ruti Ningane's absence, that really suffered a lot for Batangas in the previous game. Obviously, this is a team that's driven by system, by chemistry, and so you take some of these score players out, it's really damaging. 42-37. Three and a half minutes in the third. Mark Cruz working with Jervy Cruz. Mark will pull up. Three pointer is good. Now a couple of three point makes already in this quarter. Para sa Jensen, one coming from John Wilson, and that latest one coming from Mark Cruz. They scored 21 three pointers in their last game against Sarangani Mix. That was three pointer number four now for Jensen in this game. 4 out of 18. Levy Hernandez leans in and he gets the bounce. A tight pass and an even more difficult finish coming from Levy Hernandez. Just a simple play coming out of the system for Batanga City. Setting up Hernandez for that one-hand push shot. 13 points now for Levy. Jensen is up by 6. John Wilson, air ball. That's a rush shot from, from Wilson. Excellent cover by Oni Larim as he forced John into that difficult shot. He did not have good control of the basketball. I also don't understand why he went up. Couple of subs here. John Baloria is now on the court to join Levi Hernandez, Rafi Octobre, Rudy Lingane, and Jexter Apinan. On the other end, it's the Ant-Man Mark Cruz with Mike Alvarez. Jervy Cruz, Nicole Sorella, and Enzo Hoson. Lingane to Baloria, top of the key, he was fouled. That's a play they love to run for Jong. Jong loves those straightaway threes from top of the circle. It was just a simple pin down off of the shallow cut. At ito na ngayon sinasabi natin, the time that Jong and Levy Hernandez sharing the floor for Batanga City to try and fix their lack of firepower offensively. Sometime last year, Batangas had problems in terms of having Baloria and Hernandez on the court because of their defense. I'm sure they've tried so hard to improve in that department. These two, after all, are highly competitive here in the MPBL. Would you say that they have improved defensively? Oh yeah, I'm sure. And Coach Solo Villanueva would not rest until these two players start to show more effort on the defensive side. Like he knows what they can contribute offensively, but as we've been talking about, you cannot thrive in the system if you're not able to defend para dito sa Batanga City. Especially when they're on the floor. I'm sure Coach Solo Villanueva has tried to communicate the importance of them playing that side of the basketball. Oh, that was almost out of bounds for Enzo Hoson. 45-41. Four on the shot clock. Mark Cruz at the corner. Short. Rebound Alvarez. Mike puts it up. He misses. Jervy Cruz. Great work from him. Alvarez. Yes, on the mid-range. But what about Michael Alvarez in this game? Six points already para sa kanya. Quality minutes off the bench. Very, very efficient. Each time he's had a catch it shoot, shoot situation, he's been able to knock it down. 47-41. John Baloria up top against Enzo Hoson. Uh, the ball is with Jexter. Apinan will drive and spin. Another sorry miss. Jensen is on the run. Hoson. On to Mark Cruz, his three-pointer is short. Rebound, Apinan, and here comes Rudy Linganay. Cross court to the wrong guy. 
Alingane was wanted to set up Jong Baloria for a transition three, but Jong had other things in mind. He wanted to cut towards the basket for an easy two points. Now this exceptional pass of the game is brought to you by Buraki de Leia, the official hotel and resort of the MPBL. Great connection for Batangas. They go back. Jensen's way. Steal. Lingane on the run. Rudy Lingane all the way. Usually players that advanced in their careers would not anymore put in the effort to try and play the passing lanes. But Rudy Lingane trying to lead by example there for Batanga City getting the steal. That's a foul now on Jexter Apinan. He knew that he made a mistake. He, after all, is number one in the league and steals at 2.4. The problem is they're letting the penalty. And that's also number three already on Jexter. He was telling Coach Solo to please leave me in the game first. I can take care of my fouls. And I want to help my team finish strong here in the last 34.5 and third. First free throw missed by Jervy Cruz. Jensen is up by four with 34 seconds remaining in the third. It's been a close game since the very beginning. And again, this is the type of game kung saan inaantay na lang natin during the last five minutes of the fourth quarter. Rudy Lingane on to Rafi Octobre. Three-pointer is short. Rebound to Chea. Great effort by Don. That's his role here on this team to get those loose balls, follow it up, and get two points from it. Cruz breaks down the defense. There's the pass to Masaglang, who almost walked. Sorella will fire off to the right and short as well. There was a loose ball foul before the buzzer sounded. And that's a bummer because clock has already expired, as you mentioned. And because they are in the penalty, talking about Batanga City, Jervy Cruz, despite their no time being left on the clock, he will still take two free throws here to end the quarter. Happy October, obviously, is not happy with that call. It's going to be hard to get away with this. The referees are reviewing the previous sequence. Derby's already set to shoot free throws. Holding foul, number 11, Rafi Octobre, so, penalty. Yes, That's his first. Two free throws for Jervy Cruz. Free throw shooting natin. 7 out of 12 for Jensen, 10 out of 16 for Patangas. Let's see what happened here. I watch Rafi Octobre and Jervy Cruz try to battle for position for that rebound. It looks like there was a slight push from behind coming from Octobre as he also tried to grab on Jervy Cruz to prevent him from getting the offensive rebound. The clock is being reset here. That's why we're taking some time. Folks, again, this is the battle for the number two seed in the South Division. There's so much at stake, playoffs-wise. Tomorrow, we will go back to Imus, and then on Saturday, down south to Quezon Province, before we begin our playoffs next week. Jervy Cruz makes his first free throw with point four remaining. That's four-tenths of a second. Second one for the veteran. Smooth stroke, in and out. And that will do it for our first 30 minutes. The scoring is still not as high, 49-45. Now we talk about John Wilson in the third quarter. Well, he really tried to step up for Jensen here in the third period. There you see recognizing the mismatch against MJ De La Virgen. Almost all of the three-point shots of Jensen belonging to that guy alone. And see John Wilson. Playing good defense as well, trying to lead by example here for the Warriors as they go up by four at the end of three.
Presenting our Suzuki muscular and sporty fans of the game, just like the Avenis, do more and achieve more with the muscular and sporty scooter from Suzuki, the Avenis. Oras na para magmotor. Folks, we are inside the Nueva Ecija Coliseum, the home of your MPBL fourth season champions. The Rice Vanguards who will be defending their home court later on against the Pasay Voyagers in a preview of the first round of our North Division playoffs. This right here might just be a preview as well of the second round of the South Division playoffs should they take good care of their assignments in the first round. And this game will also determine which team will get that number two seed and home court advantage from our postseason. Quarter scoring right there on your screens. Jensen winning the last two quarters after giving away a two-point advantage in the first period. Ball tapped here in favor of Batangas. It's been a low scoring game. But then again, we have talked about the defense, the calibers of these two teams all season long in that side. Rudy Lingane working with Jexter Apinan. Turnover. And here comes Masaglang. He lost the ball. Valoria on the run with Ochea and Apinan. Don passes. Good recovery for Jensen, but not enough as Jexter scores. Well, I thought Jetson would have had a chance to uh, prevent that shot. There were two blue shirts inside the shaded area against Apinan after Ochea made the pass, but still a good resolve shown by Jex Apinan. 49-47, Jervy Cruz on to Ping Masaglang from the mid-range. No good, rebound Ochea. And here comes Batangas to try to tie or take the lead. Apinan drives, favorite left side, no conversion. And there's a foul. Committed by Don Ochea. Foul on number 15, Don Felix Apreco will return for Nicole Sorella. 49-47, 8 minutes and 45. John Wilson talking to his teammates at the bench. Felix Apreco cross court and Zohosan for three. Short rebound to Pinan. Rawson has yet to find the bottom of the net here in the second half. He did not start the third quarter, but now here in the fourth quarter, he's expected to try and duplicate the same type of performance that he had in the first half. How about Don Achea working on the post, and he's just scored for Batangas. Really scrappy guy, it's Don Achea, getting those two points inside. 49 all. Jervy Cruz gets fouled. Two plus one. That perimeter jumper has not been available for him. Majority of this game, talking about Jervy Cruz. But give credit to the good setup made by Jensen on this fine to Jervy Cruz. Despite two defenders in front of him, he was able to drain it. How many times have we seen that throughout his career? Oh, he might just be a force to reckon with come to playoffs. Jervy in and out on his free throw. That's two sorry misses already for Jervy at the stripe. Yeah, and as a whole, Etong Jensen has had a lot of problems on the stripe. That's 8 out of 15 now in free throw shooting for the Warriors. Mintis ang tira ni Rafi Octobre. And here comes Mark Cruz. The pass to Enzo Hoson. Same angle, same result. Kabila. Rudy Lingane working with Jexter Apinan. Now they go to Jong. That's a lot of space for him. Too easy. Did not expect Ping Masaglang to commit that kind of error defensively against a very established scorer in Jong Baloria. He would have thought that he would try and deny that basketball and let someone else get the pass instead of Baloria. Now we go Jensen's way. Felix Apreku could not score inside. Ball recovered by Ochea. Smart move right there. Don on the run. There's the feed. Apinan was stopped and then he was able to recover. That's a good trail job. It was actually Baloria who was ahead. He was asking for the pass, but great decision coming from Batangas to wait for Apinan who produced the, the basket off of a stick back from his own miss. 54-51. Batangas by three. Under seven minutes remaining. 
which team will get that number two seed in the South Division? Rudy Linganay working with Jexter. Linganay, seven on the shot clock. Valoria, top of the key. That's a three. Two straight three pointers. Kaling dito kay Jong Valoria. That's excellent finds coming from Batanga City. Running their play to the letter. That's a play that they love to set up for Jong, especially in this game. That's coming off another shallow cut around the free throw area and the pin down coming from their big man. I hope this game just reminds everybody of the importance of guys like Jong Baloria, Rudy Lingane, and Jexter Apinan playing all together. Now Batangas is up by six points. John Baloria versus Makati had 19 points and four rebounds. The shooting wasn't at its best, but obviously that's enough already, knowing the fact that they were under man in that game. He really had to do so much work. Oh yeah, he really had to carry the cudgels for them in that match. In fact, he even started, as you mentioned earlier, Mitch, in that game he usually comes off the bench for Levy Hernandez para kay Coach Cholo Villanueva. 57-51. Baloria, by the way, just hit back-to-back -back three pointers. Nice pass. Jexter up in hand to Rudy Linganay. Now the execution is sharper. They're deciding on the right place to make. Nice pass. John Wilson. Off on that shot. Rebound Baloria. Oh, he really had to go up and jump for it. Talking about John Baloria. That's a good effort coming from one of your top scorers. Now Batanga City has a chance to extend to 10. 59-51. Another five and a half minutes remaining. Strong Baloria needing a teammate. Ooh, he did not need one anymore. Just misfired from way out. Forward pass. Baloria. Great effort by Jong. So to anybody that's been having doubts about the capability of Jong Baloria to play defense for Batanga City. That play somehow typifies his improvement and his increased desire on that side of the floor. But it ties to Batangas. Jexter Pinan trying to escape. Couple of swings. Lingane for three. Yes, sir. A three point shot that has escaped them all game long, especially in the first half. They had zero conversions from the outside in the first two quarters. But here in this second half, that's already four with still a lot of time remaining. What a time to come alive for these veterans of Batangas. Again, they're all not 100%. John Valorius wearing that mask as he has done for the past two years. Rudy Lingane still has an injured shoulder. Jexter Apinan has a heavily bandaged right elbow. And again, as mentioned by Coach Cholo, they have already overachieved all season long. But they will not stop in trying to get that crown, even though they have already lost Cedric Ablaza. Soaring in the score, they're 17-2. And Wilson continues to miss. Three-point shooting on the other end for Jensen is 3 out of 27. 62-51. King Importante. Four minutes and change. Levy Hernandez against Enzo Hoson. They go to Apinan. Jexter from the free throw line. That's not his favorite angle. Kabila, John Wilson stepped out of bounds. Oh, bit, poor mistake right there coming from John. Not really much of a forced turnover right there. Now, Jexter Apinan will 
get this well-deserved breather, even a fist bump from Coach Rich Alvarez. That's how much respect they have for each other. As a Boluto returns for Batangas. Apinan, by the way, has nine points, 14 rebounds, and four assists. And an injured elbow at that. Rudy Linganay against Nico Elorde. Great defense by Nico. A better escape by Rudy. Good help by Mondragon. Bodies on the floor. A lot of hits there. More bodies keep on crashing. Nico Elorde is blocked. Wow, what a defensive sequence by the Draymond Green of Batangas in King Importante. You see here Importante timing that perfectly. Elorde tried to switch hands in midair. He was going for the right and then suddenly shifted back on over toward, towards the left. And that was one thing that Importante was able to read. Three minutes and 15. Matangas by 11. Again, the scoring in this quarter is 17 to 2. Ochea turns around. Wow. That is something else from Don Ochea. Well, actually, he has a lot of shots like that. Okay. In, in fact, he's been able to uh, knock those shots down, but his role on this team is not to score the basketball. That's why we haven't seen a lot of that coming from Mr. Ochea. Two points on the other end for Jensen. The lead is back to 11. Done now on the attack. Ochea is fouled. Oh, you can see the added confidence now with Don Ochea. He's attacking the basket a lot more and is not shy to show what he can do here para sa Batangas. Couple of subs here. We have Jexter Apinan, Mark Cruz, and John Valoria checking in. It's Hernandez, Hoson, and Aboluto who will sit down. Two minutes and 36. Baseline inbound. Don Ochea up top to Jexter Apinan. Jex will go to Jong. Step back, three-pointer. That's a foul. A four-point play opportunity for Jong Baloria. Well, what a time to catch fire here para dito sa Batanga City. They used, again, the majority of their shot clock. You see here Baloria getting it on the half and then stepping back to the right. That's a great shot. Rodriguez did not even know what hit him right there. He was trying to crouch and avoid the challenge, but his body was all over that shot step. Oh, he got his own rebound. That's a five-point sequence for John Baloria. And now he's up to 15 points. Let me see his stats by halftime. Baloria had two points in the first two quarters. Mondragon answers back. Well, they'll, get, they'll have to get points in a hurry here. Talking about Jensen, time is slowly running out. We now enter the final two minutes of this one. Just like that, we're already going down the wire. Parang halos kakasimula lang natin kanina sa laro na to. Batangas is closing in to that number two seed in the South Division, which will mean home court advantage in the first two rounds of the playoffs. Nico Elorde is fouled by John Valoria. Well, he's taking matters into his own hands right now. He feels like his other teammates haven't really been delivering. And so he tries to get points himself. That's Nico Elorde, a guy who usually initiates the offense and passes it off to guys like John Wilson and Mark Cruz. First free throw for Nico is good. Elorde now has three points with four rebounds and five dimes in this game. Jensen will have to work fast here. There you see Coach Rich Alvarez and Coach Vis Valencia. There's a foul at the backcourt. Nico's aggression has been a bit too much from time to time. Yeah, well, you know, that's something that very hard to control especially if you're a guy who really loves to put on the pressure in the backcourt one-on-one 69 57 under 90 seconds remaining Batangas smelling blood here 
They won that number two seed. Apinan escapes. And he will proceed to the strike. Well, obviously, Jensen could not believe it. And that's going to be the fifth foul on Mondragon. So Jensen will lose a big man here in the final one minute and 18 of the game. That's going to be tough para sa kanila. Speaking of Jensen, Ivan Tracy just messaged us. Pati natin ang kanyang anak na si Philip Maison. Good evening sa inyo. Now we have a technical foul on Batangas for improper bench decorum. And Coach Cholo is wondering which of them at the bench caused that technical foul. Nevertheless, this is a comfortable lead for Batangas with Wilson proceeding to the stripe. A minute and 18 remaining. Although again, folks, we have seen stranger things in basketball. In the MPBL itself, Mike Ayanayan before stormed back for the San Juan Knights in Bicol. I remember that game versus Pataan. They were down by double figures. He scored 12 points in the last 90 seconds. And they ultimately won that game. As Jexer Apinan missed his first gimme. Well, good thing Batangas was able to establish a good cushion before this trip to the line by Apinan. At least he got a split, and that puts Batanga City ahead by a dozen. How about Jexa Apinan? A double double with 10 points and 14 rebounds, five dimes as well for him. All that while he's playing with an injured elbow. You have a timeout, 70 to 58. There you see our VIPs, Emma Oreta, Kenneth Durendes, Ruri Distrito, and Satar Makantali. If you would move the camera to the right. Unting usog, eh? Hindi na mokuwa. Risa Sato was just there, sitting beside our VIPs. Will Macaloni and Byron Villarias look to be missing out on tonight's action against the Pasay Voyagers. That's no surprise there because I'm sure they would want them healthy come the playoffs. They are locked in as the number two seed already in the north. 70 to 58, a minute and 15 remaining in the fourth. John Wilson passes. Rene Pacquiao misses. Ball out of bounds in favor of Jensen. Boy, I'm telling you, Rene Pacquiao has missed a number of those point blank shots in this game. Simula first quarter pala. That's just unfortunate for him because this could have been his breakout game yeah. as he got the start over Larry Rodriguez. And there you see Sir Bon Cuevas with a nice smile at the sideline. Gotta love this man, by the way, and everything that he has done for oh, yeah. Garcia. Yeah, not just for the basketball team, but for the province as a whole. And his initiatives for Nevisia, by the way, has caused some effect, actually not just some effect, a big effect to the other franchises of the league. He's one of the main reasons why the level of competition has been raised this season. Oh yeah, I mean, he really set the tone being the defending champions. He wanted to be the example that other teams follow and that's for the good of everybody here in the MPBL for the teams for the players and for the fans especially that added level of competition has really been very beneficial that's why you look forward to every game day here in the league 
72-58 now. Jensen still trying to fight back. Look at the heart of Nico Elorde. He just couldn't score. This should do it. Batangas will secure the number two seed in the South Division. And they did it. Or they're doing it with a ton of injured players on the roster. And even Mark Cruz is missing in today's action. Oliver at him. To seal the deal, this guy has come alive in the second half. Yeah, he started in place. Uh, I think it was Levy Hernandez in this third quarter. And he pinagsabay siya with King Importante. They, those two usually share the same position. What a great closeout victory here by Batanga City. Really turning things around in the second half of the fourth quarter. And so Batangas will get that number two seed in the South Division, which means home court advantage most likely in the first two rounds of the playoffs should we follow the favorites in seedings. And our best player is John Baloria. Well, you had a lot of good contributors for Batanga City, especially in that fourth quarter, but it was really John Baloria who delivered the telling blows for the embassy chill towards the end those two three-point baskets were a big help for them in creating that separation that double-digit advantage to help them get the victory he even had a five-point swing in one sequence that's how deadly he was after only having two points in the first two quarters mr john baloria is now with andrea indicio First of all, congratulations, John. Kasama na naman kita dito sa courtside for another best player interview. At ang ganda nga ng pinakita mo last game and you match that with your performance tonight. And speaking of consistency, ikaw din ang number one scorer ng team nyo ngayon. Paano mo ba na-maintain ang ganyang klase ng laro? Uh, first of all, ano, uh, papasalamat ako igad sa binigyan niyang panalo. Uh, si Ari! Uh, siguro, ano, nagbubunga uh, lang yung pag-extra shooting namin during practice. Uh, bago mag-start and then pagkatapos, nag-extra shooting kami. Ayun, siguro. Ah, nag, nagbunga siguro. Kaya ayun, consistent yung laro ko. At kanina nga, Jong, down kayo nung first half. Pero ano bang adjustment yung ginawa ninyo at nakabawi kayo ng malaki sa second half? Uh, siguro, nung first half, uh, bad start ako. And then, ano, wala ako sa focus. Uh, mga lapses, uh, hindi natatawagan ng foul, napuprostrate ako. And then, my teammates, coach, uh, kinakusap ako na, ayun, uh, mag-focus ka. Kasi mawawala, uh, mawawala yung laro mo pag ano, na, nagpapa, ano ka, papadala ka sa emotion mo. Ay, kaya yun, ah, nagbunga naman during third and fourth quarter. Ayun, uh, nakakashoot na ako. Alright, tama nga naman. Meron ka bang gustong batihin o pasalamatan? Uh, binabati ko, uh, Batangas Embassy, Chill, uh, Boss Bong, uh, uh, Lushutan, Boss Jin, uh, Boss Gary, uh, Bong Tantoy, Embassy Chill, Family, uh, Batangas City, and then family ko sa Lanao. Uh, papa ko si Eric, si Minda, mama ko, uh, mga kapatid ko, lahat, uh, mga kamag-anakan ko, and then uh, anak ko si Tiara, uh, lahat ng ano, kamag-anakan ko. Uh, condolences din sa, uh, sa side ng mama ko, namatayan, uh, Doroha, and then the Balos. Thank you so much. Once again, that is Jong Baloria, our best player of the game. Back to you, Mix and Happy. Thank you so much, Andrea. Congratulations to Jong Baloria and the rest of Batangas City who have overachieved drastically already here in the fifth season of the MPBL. They have officially locked in as the number two seeded team in the South Division and Jensen will be the number three seeded team in that same division. Thank you for joining us for Andrea Indicio and Javi Palanya. My name is Vix Gomez and in the po, ang Maharliga Pilipinas Basketball League, ang Liga ng Bawat Pilipino.